Hey guys, welcome back to another one. We're finally back in the shed for a few more tips. Um, it's been fun doing a couple of trips, but uh, it's good to be back in the shed. Anyway guys, this is another requested video. This one's on pretty much just the basics of pearl perch. Some guys have been asking me some questions about pearlies. And I will say the hardest thing about pearl perch is finding them. Once you find them, they're not a hard fish to catch. You've got to find them though. Um, I'll talk about some different depths and some re and just the main rig and baits. And I do bait up a little bit different than other people. I'll show you that as well. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get into it. Let's we'll start off with pearly fishing or around pearly fishing, generally around deeper water. Um, most of this fish around, I think it's, what did I write down here? Around what, 180 to 120 sort of mark. Don't worry guys, I've got the old trusty board over here as well. I'll point the camera at that a little bit later and show you. Yeah, 80 to 120 is a usual common depth for pearl is what most of us fish in. But you will catch them anywhere from 40 to about 150-ish, okay? Um, generally, when you're catching the pearl is in the closer water, like on a 40 and 50 meter line, a lot of them are just undersized. You get a few, but they're just undersized. You can get big ones in there, don't get me wrong. But a lot of them are undersized. Most of us go out wider to around, like I said, the 80 to 120 mark to chase some decent pearlies. And don't worry, there's plenty of small ones out there too, as we found out the other day. We got a lot of undersized, unfortunately. Um, okay, so generally, bell perch, you want to go for a bit of a run out to the 50s and beyond, between the 50s and the shelf. Look for wire weed or fairly flat bottom. We'll get into that over here on the board shortly. But to start off with, I'm just going to show you a basic, basic quick to start off with and some outfits. So we'll start off with the rig. The rig for pearl is it works the absolute best. It's just guys, back to a Paternoster rig, simple. You got your bottom dropper there. That can be anywhere from like eight to 16 ounce, depending on the depth and the current. Most is run around the 12, okay? Then I do like about an arm's length to my first hook, roughly, rule. And once again for pearlies, I like to use circles, okay? I don't need a big circle, a small circle. And once again, you can see the way that's rigged up, it's pointing in, not out, okay? So one hook with a bit of Lumo tube, that's got tube and bead, you can dress it up. Pearlies don't mind a bit of Lumo, so don't, don't be scared to dress it up. Another thing too, I like putting that on there, because it's sort of, it's a line protector, it protects your line from the raspy teeth. Okay, so we've got one of those, one hook, and then I'll go another arm's length, my basic rig, to another hook, same, see, hook facing in. Then another arm's length, and I've got a swivel. So two hook, just a pattern off rig, guys. Keep it nice and simple. Usually run about 12 ounces is usually enough, but depending on the current and the depth, you can go up to 16, which is rather heavy. Okay. And the other way to do this is also a pattern off but I see a lot of guys doing this. Like, I like to have two circles, two circles on, because I bait up a bit different. But sometimes I like, sometimes I see guys, they have a set of gang hooks on here. Like I said, of gangs. On the top one, not a circle, so one circle and one gang. So they have a hole pilchard on the top one. Okay, that's another way to do it. I just don't like doing that because a lot of the time it's a pilly, whole pilly's going down or twist up and tangle your rig and get twisted. I don't really like that. So what I do is a bit different. Just, I'm going to go to the baiting bit here. Um, I like squid and pillies for pearlies. Most guys like squid and pillies. Sometimes you put a whole squid on or a strip of a strip of squid on one of your hooks, but I do it a little bit different as I'm going back better show you. I can't really say what it is, the name of it, <laughs> on YouTube, I might get in trouble, but you'll understand. It's when you get a pilchard, you jam it inside the squid, you know what the name of that is, most of you do. Okay, so you jam the pilly, you take the head, up, head off the squid and the guts out of the tube, you jam the pilly down inside the tube. But the difference thing is, when guys do that, they put that squid tube and the whole pearly on the hook once and send it down. And once again, whole pearl tube, big squid tube, that can twist and get tangled up and not work so well. So what I do is once I jam the pearly down inside the squid, I do something different. I go cut them into chunks like so. Okay? You see that? That's like a, a squid blanket, basically. A squid wrapped around a pearly. And when you're using small hooks, like I like to use little hooks. The hooks I'm using are 4 O's, and the ones I've bought, pulled out are owners. A 4 O owner. That's just a good little hook for pearlies. Big pearlies, small pearlies, all size pearlies. Just a really good hook. 
And when you get a bait like this, I know you say it's small, but with a circle hook, it works really well. Okay, then you can just go and put the, basically the squid and pilly, just push, push it through once. That's it. You just push it through once. That's all you're going to need. Once you find the pearlies, they're not hard to catch. You just got to find the buggers. And that on the way down won't get, won't get twist and get tangled. So I do that in the bottom hook. I do it again in the top hook. This is a, once again, a squid wrapped around the pilly. With the pilly just slid out. <laughs> so, see, filtered squid over a pilly. And we'll put that on too. But that pilly doesn't want to stay inside the squid. Come on, get on there. I'm trying to keep keep myself clean. I get too dirty. <laughs> anyway, so out. Oh. Circle works well. We go put that on there like so. Now we're just gonna through the center. That one's a bit rough, the pilly come out with the scales, but anyway, you saw how that works, like so. You squid the pilly on the other hook as well. We'll leave that one off, that one didn't, it's a bit hard to put on. Okay, so two hooks like that, and drop it down, that's all you need guys. You don't need a big chunk of bait. Look, I'll go out to the 50s with guys, and say I'm putting whole squids on, and whole pilgrims and both, and really chunk up the hooks, and cover the hooks up full of bait. And all it, all it takes is one little bit of squid flesh, or filter or something to cover that point and you're going to miss every strike so fishing like that hooks out you're not going to miss and the whole idea of circles as you know when you start feeling bites and pearl pearlies won't bite this decent pearlies will just grab axis nice little snack they'll just grab it turn around start swimming and tell you you're going to do a start lifting the rod slowly until the hook does its job curls around the corner of the mouth you hook up you're on it's easy and it works very well if you're getting pickies, I'll pick the bait away fairly quickly, that'll drive you nuts. But most of the time, pearlies, a couple of bangs and they're on. They'll just swallow it and go. Okay? So that's the way I like to bait up. Generally a little bit bigger baits. Not much, like the size of one I had there. Something like that, hook through once. A bit of squid over the top, like a squid blanket. Will work very well. That's just something a little bit different I do, and it does work quite good, guys. Give it a try. And once again, um, and the other rig, you say if we're going out like deep dropping, or even if you want to wind, but most guys deep dropping, so we're going to go fishing 120 to 150 metres, chasing pearlies. Same sort of thing. This is a Paternoster rig, three hook, but this one's for the electric. So we've got like 80 pound trace line here and 100 pound main. And this is all just crimped up for deep dropping with your crimp on tools like so, see? And once again dressed up with some memo tube and beads. And I'll use exactly the same bait on this. Okay, pilly jammed in a squid, cut in a little bit bigger chunks, once through each of those hooks. And that works really well. Okay guys? And that's also a good sort of rig and depth when you chase a few flame, flame snapper and you know, barcode and that sort of stuff too. The outfits themselves, you don't need to go big heavy duty outfits. I'm not saying, because pearlies don't really fight too much. They hit hard and they're a bucket mouth. They open their mouth and when you're trying to wind up, they've got a bit of weight to them. So you don't need, you, little light outfits aren't going to help you up. You don't want to go over the top and too heavy either. Most of those run like 15 kilo, 30 pound outfits. And you can either run spin reels or overheads, it won't matter. I usually run overheads, I just like using overheads. So that's a little Torium, that's a 15 kilo outfit you've seen many a times. Put this with a Paternoster on it, they're small baits, and it does catch its pearlies easily. And it's a, such a good outfit, strong outfit, something like that. So if you do hook a kingfish, which you will at times do on this and snap or another reef fish, something a bit bigger, a 15 kilo outfit, you'll generally get them. Okay, so some bigger fish jump on, not a problem in the world. If you're in there using spin gear, you just want to use spin gear. That's a 30 pound outfit there. That's a 5,000 Stratic. 30 pound braid, a nice little 15 kilo rod, little five foot six spin rod, okay? Do it easy, pearlies and bigger fish, you hook a kingfish, you'll have some fun, but you should get them. You don't need to go over the top at 80 pound, 100 pound with everything, like I see a lot of guys nowadays, I don't know why, everyone wants to fish too heavy. I don't see the point. Um, 
Okay, so that's the rigs. The sinkers, like I said, eight to uh, say sixteen. That's like a, that's a twelve what we usually run. And don't forget, four o or five o fine. Just in circles. You don't want to go too big, depending on the brand. But that's the owners. They're very good. They work well. Okay, so that's enough of that. Let's turn around and have a trusty old board, shall we? Sorry, guys. Just bear with me for a second. Hope you guys can see that. Is that looking good? Now, just a few tips. So, for pearl perch, here in like southeast Queensland, I know you'll catch pearl is basically Port Macquarie to around Bundaberg, so a fair chunk of the east coast. But here around the Gold Coast in southeast Queensland, we like the cooler months over winter. The current slows down out water. It's generally nice blue water, a little bit cooler, and you'll find the pearlies. I usually like fishing around July. July, I find, is the best time for the bigger pearlies. That's just me. Other guys might find different months, but I like July. I usually find a few good fish around July when it's really, you know, nice and cool. The depth, I usually like fishing 80 to 120 to find them, but you can get them anywhere from, say, 40 to 150 metres. Okay, so you don't have to go out too far. But just like I said before, usually you'll find the smaller fish in closer. Right, guys? You don't find a lot of the bigger fish in closer. Oh, your camera just moves. Hopefully you can still see all that, all right. The rigs, as you saw, paternosters for deep dropping or just on your normal rods. The gear, 15 kilo usually with braid and the trace line I usually runs around a 60 pounds. Usually make them out of 60. Unless you get using the deep drop out water, we go up to 100, 80 and 100. Just in case you know, catch a flame snapper or barcod or some bigger fish. Yeah, see, 40 to 60 pound trace, but I usually like 60. 40 I find a bit light, especially with raspy teeth on the way out. Or if you hook a big, like a decent kingfish or a big snapper, coming up from depths, good chance you could break them off. So 60 is usually a nice, safe bet. A 4.0 to a 6.0 circle hook, depending on the brand. 12 to 16 ounce south sinkers, or I should have put the 8. There's the other day we were using 8, there's absolutely no current out there. There's none whatsoever the other day. I was just straight on the boat, no current, no wind, we're just sitting there. We were using an eight pound, uh, eight ounce in, what were we fishing? 85, 87 meters, hitting the bottom straight on the boat. So anywhere from eight to 16, depending on the current and the depth. The baits, usually like squid and pilchards. Um, that's, you know, a C and S. Some of you guys will know what that is. So that's basically the pill jammed inside of a squid. I won't say it on YouTube. Um, and then I cut into pieces and use the pieces on the hooks on the circle hooks and it works well don't strike just slowly lift as you feel bites and what i look for on the sounder um maybe i turned the light around you can see that hopefully hopefully you can see that can we yeah a bit better so this is generally what pearlies look like on the bottom okay so you're going along the bottom you're looking for wire weed we're not really on reef we're on like harder structure or wire weed it's fairly flat ground a little bumpy and you'll see pearl is like come up a couple of meters or a meter and just look like flat along the stretch of bottom like so. Usually when you see things like that, a lot of the time that can be pearlies, okay? Doesn't matter where you are, just drop a bait down into that. It's a good chance that's pearlies. And the other way they show up is when they school up a bit more. Same sort of thing, they'll be hard on the bottom, but they'll bunch up and go like three, four meters off the bottom into a, like a quite big school like so. They're the two things I usually find when I'm fishing for pearlies like that. Okay, just give you an idea. Don't go looking for lots of big arches thinking there's big pearlies like arch, arch, arch everywhere. You're just going to see like a schooling fish. That's going to, um, depending on the sounders, that could be green or blue or something, depending on what colour palette you got. But they'll just school up like so on the bottom, a couple of metres, two, three, four metres off. You'll see that. Or they're going to be like a metre and a half, two metres and stretched along the bottom for quite a long way. That's usually pearl, these guys laying amongst wire weed. That's the sort of things you're going to be looking for on your sounder. Okay, you're not looking for reefs, you're not looking for ledges. You're looking for fairly flat bottom with this sort of stuff out in 80, 90, 100 metres. Okay, and if you find it, you're not sure what it is, drop a bait down in the paternoster. Um, pilly, squid, whatever, and there's a fair chance, guys, you'll find yourself some pearlies. Anyway, um... That's just a basic, back to basic sort of video. Excuse me for the camera a second. That's just a basic video. Hopefully that helps you out, guys. Gives you an idea on what you're going to look for when you go out wide chasing a few pearlies. 
and now winter's here and it's coming into the best season i hope you guys get out and give it a crack and once again if you like the channel and like what i'm doing some of the tips uh please subscribe as it really does help me out and if there's something you want to know about in the videos just ask me in the comments and we'll see how we go anyway guys hope you like that one i'll see you next time thanks guys bye